learn how to make your own colloidal silver generator as we make a batch of colloidal silver. This is Desert Homestead Prepping. Make sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. All right, welcome back everybody. So on this episode, I decided that we would go over making colloidal silver. Um, colloidal silver is a, a great antibiotic um, used for all kinds of remedies. It's safe for the body. Um, you know, just one of the, the great natural remedies that we've had for a long time. So I've seen many different ways of making your own colloidal silver. I actually made some a couple weeks ago um, and I just used silver coins and I actually used uh, this little contraption and I just I just hooked the, the coins up to this and actually used the 12 volt battery and it worked okay. So I'm going to try something different this time. Um, we actually got here a small voltage inverter. This is you'll find these on all kinds of components and stuff and we we had an old uh, printer and decided to get a new one and when I when I threw out the old printer I was looking at this and realized that this is a, a 22 volt inverter and so you know it takes that AC 110 converts it down to 22 volt DC now that I'm hoping that the the lower amperage that this puts out is going to be what I need to get that smaller nano particle size of the colloidal silver and uh, you know, I went ahead and ordered some some rods some silver rods that I got today and uh, pretty excited to try these out so this is from Life Force. You can buy the Life Force generator that these will actually go to. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna come up with a contraption of how to attach these silver rods to my homemade generator. And it you know it comes with this cool little certificate right here that shows that the testing and all the other particles that are in it 99.9 percent .9 silver so we're gonna give this a try from what I understand these rods will, will probably last you know way beyond my lifetime being able to make colloidal silver regularly so we're just gonna use a, a glass jar and I got some plastic lids that'll fit on it and uh, let's see if we can come up with something that's going to work and uh, try it out and see how it does all right let's see if we can drill just a couple holes in this i want these rods to fit in here pretty tight so there's no wiggle room we can match up a, a right size drill bit that's looking pretty pretty good there
I should be able to reposition these so that they're they're fairly close, fairly close to each other. I don't want them too close, but I want them close enough where that energy can kind of jump back and forth. All right. Now we'll get going on, on this thing. Usually you can tell the, the positive and negative right here. I don't know if you can, you can see it, but there's a dashed line. That's going to be the positive. The other one will be the negative. It doesn't really matter. So I'm going to use um, these two. They're both red. I heard somebody talking about the cathode and the, you know, whatever, different anode for the positive and negative. I don't think it really matters. Whichever one's hooked up to positive or negative is just not really going to be a big deal. This out of the way. That's how I strip wires, my teeth. Probably not the best for your teeth, but whatever. be pretty much that simple should be able to hook this sucker on right here and this one just like that Let's see how it does let me get some tape and uh, tape this up much all set now the, the other thing that you need is distilled water so that's what I got here but distilled water is going to be uh, pretty much absent of all other minerals that you're gonna find in normal tap water or spring water you don't want any other minerals or stuff like that and we want to be able to know that it's going to be that pure colloidal silver. So we're going to fill this up, you know, probably just right here to the pretty close to the top. And uh, we'll plug it in and we'll see how it does.
Okay, let's give it a shot. Um, we'll uh, plug it in and I'll grab my voltage meter, just check and see how it's doing. Plug right here. All right, grab the voltage meter here. Take a look, see what we got. Let's set it to 200 because we're gonna be just over 20. So, yep, 22.1 volts. All right, so I'm not sure how long this is gonna take. I'm gonna let it sit here and you know, I'll come back and check on it. I'm pretty sure it's it's probably gonna take several hours. We're uh, about 4.30 in the afternoon here. Oh, it looks like it's working right now. If you can kinda get in here just a little bit. You already see those bubbles? Yep. Looks like you can already see it just starting to work its magic. All right, so we're back. It's uh, been about three hours, so it's 7.30 right now. And this is where we're at. So I could see without having something to stir it continually, it did build up some pretty good sized chunks. You can see kind of swirling around in there. And I, I did come out here and try stirring it up, but you know, just couldn't stand here and swirl it for three hours. You can see it's definitely much darker. Um, I don't know. I I think that that's going to be pretty good. And then, so we'll just disconnect it and we'll let this sit for uh, oh I don't know maybe a couple days and we'll see what the color is. All right, here it is a couple days later. Um, looks like this colloidal silver has turned out pretty good. Um, pretty happy with it. Seems like the batch that I made um, with the 12 volt batteries is a little darker, but this is, this is still pretty good. The first batch I made with the 12 volt batteries. I did that for, and for about four hours, maybe four and a half hours. So you can see here, this is the first batch right here. And it's darker than this one. So I think this that I did with the 22 volts if I would have just left it probably another hour, it would have been really similar. So either way works. You know, I I got a friend who uses 9 volt batteries to make a, their colloidal silver. So you can do that. You can do 12 volt batteries. Um, it's not really that hard to make. yeah so you know got a cut on my finger and I you know put a couple drops on the pad of the the bandage and uh, seems to keep it from getting infected I, I'm doing all kinds of work around the house working on vehicles and stuff so I mean even 
the most minor of cuts or scrapes will get infected. So having something like this is very important for me. I use this stuff on, on various cuts and burns and, you know, having like a sinus infection, be able to get like a little mister and kind of spray it in your sinuses seems to work good for that. Um, you know, I had a tooth infection, being able to put that on, on my tooth and kind of rinse that around in your mouth and, and it just seems to clear up anything that you're struggling with as far as infections and, and sicknesses. Yeah, that's it. So, so yeah, the, the metal rods, the, so the silver rods that I got, they were only like $30 on Amazon. So you can get those. Um, like I said, you can use the silver coins. I mean, of course it's, it's gotta be pure silver or, you know, you're going to get other types of metals and toxic stuff. And it's, and it's not going to be good. So it's got to be pure silver. And then after that, you know, you can, you can run a small DC voltage through it and, uh, you know, give it some time and you'll be able to get yourself some good colloidal silver. You can drink this stuff. Um, you can purify water with this stuff. Um, really amazing. All right, well, that's it for now. You know, thanks for joining in. Hopefully this is helpful and, uh, you know, can help you guys be able to make your own disinfectant and purifier. We'll catch you guys next time on the next video. God bless.